Hello, my name is Meryl Borowski. I'm a senior program specialist working in the Office of Child Care on the Tribal Request for Information. In this video, I'll provide a summary of the RFI's background and questions related to CCDF administration. The first topic under this section is early childhood and related systems coordination. Tribal lead agencies are required to coordinate CCDF services with other tribal, federal, state, and or local child care and early childhood programs. However, differ, different and conflicting program requirements, multiple separate funding streams, and a lack of a shared vision across these different programs can make coordination challenging. OCC would like to learn more about what barriers interfere with tribal lead agencies' program goals and coordination of CCDF with other early childhood programs like Head Start, preschool funds offered through tribal, state, or local resources, home visiting, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act Part C and Part B, Child and Adult Child Care Food Program, and the Women, Infants, and Children Program. OCC is specifically interested in ways in which tribes currently, or would like to, braid, blend, and or layer funding from multiple early childhood federal funding streams to better meet their needs. OCC would also like to know what kinds of barriers currently exist and any proposed solutions. What suggestions do you have for better coordination of CCDF among early childhood programs? What suggestions do you have that would make it easier to braid, blend, layer, or use multiple funding streams? Another topic related to CCDF administration is spending requirements. After reserving CCDF funds for quality and administrative costs, tribal lead agencies with medium or large allocations must spend at least 70% of the remainder of CCDF discretionary funds on direct child care services for children. The purpose of requiring tribal lead agencies to spend the majority of CCDF funds on direct child care services is to ensure that child care funds are being used for the program's central purpose, provide child care assistance to eligible families. All tribal lead agencies have a 15% cap on administrative expenses and must spend a minimum of 9% of their funds on quality improvement activities such as indigenous language and cultural curriculum and activities, training and professional development, improving or developing early childhood and development guidelines, and supporting health and safety. Tribal lead agencies with medium and large allocations must spend an additional 3% of their CCDF funds on quality and supply building activities for infants and toddlers. OCC is interested in learning how these spending requirements support or challenge tribal lead agencies in program implementation. Do these spending requirements prevent access to childcare and early learning services in tribal nations? If so, please tell us how or why and any suggested changes to improve this. Are there alternative policies to the 70% direct service requirement that would better meet tribe childcare needs? If so, what are those suggestions? Are there alternative policies to the 15% administrative cap that would better meet the tribe's child care needs? If so, what should the administrative cap be? Are there additional policies to the 9% quality set aside that would better meet tribe's child care needs? If so, what should the quality set aside be? Another topic in this section is construction and major renovation of child care facilities. Tribal lead agencies may use CCDF funds for the construction and or major renovation of child care facilities in their communities. Tribal lead agencies must request to set aside CCDF funds for these projects and spend the money within three years. They must also demonstrate that no other adequate facilities exist and that without the facilities, the CCDF program would be difficult to operate. A full list of construction and major renovation application requirements can be found in the program instructions. As part of this request for information, OCC is interested in ways to improve the process for applying for and receiving funds for major construction for construction and major renovation. What suggestions do you have to improve the application and approval process? What alternative policies or requirements would better meet tribal nations' child care and early learning facilities needs? What changes to policy or processes would make it easier to pursue jointly funded and or jointly used facilities? And now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Milton Bluehouse. Hello, my name is Milton Bluehouse Jr. I'm a senior policy advisor for the Office of the Assistant Secretary, working with the Office of Child Care 
on our tribal request for information. I will begin by starting with obligation and liquidation deadlines. Tribal lead agencies must commit, obligate CCDF funds within two fiscal years of the grant award and must spend, liquidate the funds by the end of the third year they were awarded. These timeframes begin on October 1st, regardless of when grant awards are received. If the CCDF funds are not spent within these timelines, they are returned to the U.S. Treasury. OCC has heard from tribal lead agencies that rapid increase in CCDF funding since 2017 has made it more difficult to track, commit, and spend funds by these deadlines. The rapid increase in funding and associated number of funding streams lead many tribal lead agencies to request deadline extensions through temporary fiscal waivers. Request for information. OCC is interested to hear if and how these deadlines have supported tribal investments or created barriers or challenges. We are seeking feedback on alternative solutions for tracking, planning, and spending funds on child care services and activities, including whether there are more appropriate spending timeframes. Moving on, reporting requirements. Tribal lead agencies are required to submit two yearly reports to OCC about their CCDF program. One report is on the child care services provided through CCDF, and the other is a financial report to show that funds were spent according to CCDF requirements. These reports provide program information to OCC that serve to help ensure CCDF funds are being spent within the parameters of the law. Request for information. OCC is interested to hear how the reporting requirements impact tribal CCDF lead agencies and whether they create barriers or challenges for program implementation. Do the reporting requirements align with tribal data sovereignty? If not, how so? What suggestions do you have for improving reporting? Are there better ways to share administrative and spending data? How could information about your program best tell the story of how CCDF funds impact your citizens and nations? Moving to quality activities. All tribal lead agencies must spend a portion of their CCDF funds on quality activities, which include indigenous language and culture curriculum and activities, training and professional development, improving or developing early learning and development guidelines, supporting health and safety, or any other tribally defined quality improvement activity. Request for information. OCC is interested in hearing about how tribal nations make decisions about where to invest in child care quality, as well as any ways in which CCDF rules or processes create barriers for tribal lead agencies improving child care quality. How do you determine your quality priorities and activities? Please speak to ways in which CCDF rules and process might be changed to better support tribal lead agency efforts to improve child care quality. Tribal state coordination. State CCDF programs sometimes intersect with administration of tribal CCDF programs. Because of this, the CCDF requires states to be proactive and timely in reaching out to tribal officials for collaboration. And states are required to describe how they consulted, collaborated, and coordinated with tribes in their state CCDF plan. CCDF regulations recognize the need for states to conduct formal, structured consultation with tribal governments, including tribal leadership. Many states and tribes have consultation policies and procedures in place to support the government-to-government -government coordination efforts. Despite the CCDF requirements to coordinate, collaborate, and consult, some tribal nations have shared with OCC that they have not been in communication with or contacted by state CCDF lead agencies. Tribal lead agencies are subject to health and safety as well as monitoring requirements for providers who receive CCDF funds, including the option to exempt relative providers from health and safety requirements. They have some additional flexibility in determining which monitoring requirements should apply to non-relative child care providers through approved alternative approaches and tribal lead agencies can introduce strategies that are more culturally appropriate or more financially feasible for Native children, families, and child care providers. 
state lead agencies are subject to the same health and safety requirements as tribes and must have child care licensing requirements for child care providers. State lead agencies may require child care providers to meet additional or different health and safety standards or quality levels to participate in the state CCDF program and or receive state CCDF subsidy funds. Tribal lead agencies may, and many do, use their CCDF funds to pay child care providers regulated by state lead agency, rather than requiring a separate state of tribal health and safety requirements or standards. In cases where tribally operated child care centers accept state subsidy payments, state lead agencies may require such providers to meet their state-specific health and safety requirements or standards. However, state licensing or regulation and quality improvement systems may not be culturally appropriate or relevant for Native children, families, and child care providers, therefore impacting tribal sovereignty and self-determination. Request for information. OCC is interested in understanding how tribal CCDF programs are impacted by state-specific CCDF requirements, how state tribal coordination requirements could be improved, and what role federal partners could play in these processes. How might CCDF coordination requirements better meet tribal lead agencies' coordination needs? What would facilitate more effective CCDF partnerships between state and tribal lead agencies. If state childcare requirements prevent a tribal nation from implementing their own tribally defined childcare requirements, what is the impact on tribal CCDF program and native children and what would be a better approach? Are there ways that state childcare requirements or systems impact tribal sovereignty and self-determination? What suggestions do you have to improve tribal and state coordination. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to your feedback on OCC's Tribal CCDF program. Please visit our Tribal RFI resource page for easy access to the full RFI text, as well as other videos and fact sheets. Thank you. Thank you.